Hello, and welcome to Calming the Chaos, where we present tips, tools, and techniques to help you find peace in a chaotic world. I'm your host, Tracy Canella, licensed mental health counselor at Lokahi Counseling. This channel and the Calming the Chaos podcast is for those who want self-help and education. It's not a substitute for counseling or psychotherapy. So if you like the information, please subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. Thanks so much for listening. And now, let the chaos begin. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about what to expect from counseling or psychotherapy. So if you haven't gone to a counselor or you haven't gotten psychotherapy yet, you may want to be interested in what to expect. And I'll give you a little bit of a tour of my offices here in Olympia, Washington. So let's get started. The first thing you should expect is a safe place to talk and to hear somebody listen to you, not give advice. That's something you shouldn't expect. You should expect from a counselor a welcoming environment and a person who is going to be able to listen to your cares and your concerns in an open and a validating sort of manner. Depending on what kind of issue you're coming in for counseling to get help with, the counselor may or may not approach you in different ways. There is something that has to do with the method of treatment being applied to the thing that you are struggling with. So for example, if you're struggling with anxiety, a lot of people will want to have behavioral therapy or tools and techniques that have to do with mind body techniques, breathing techniques, relaxation techniques. And sometimes if you're dealing with a complex relationship issue, a counselor may want to talk to you about how you're thinking. So cognitive behavioral therapy may come into play with that sort of treatment. The important thing to understand is that you are the most important part of your treatment plan. And so your feedback to the counselor is so important. When I talk about a relaxing and gentle environment, this is my office. When you come into my offices, you see my credentials. And then you go in and you see Suite 216. And this is where I do telehealth. You see my credentials on the wall and when you see the backdrop of how I do therapy, you'll always see my credentials. And this is what I see when I do telehealth. The bud inlet. And sometimes I'm able to see the majesty of Mount Rainier. Look at that mountain. So amazing and truly majestic. This is outside of my window. And what I see when I do therapy, it's so amazing. It's a great backdrop for helping people to understand and move through their problems. In this room, there has been so much healing. And I'm kind of sad that not a lot of people are coming into this room. But yet, I know that healing happens in this room through telehealth. And so right next door, there is my in-person sessions. And it's a different suite. And yet it has an amazing view. A lot of my clients just love this view. They comment on it and they love it. And I love looking at it as well. And so when I do therapy in this room, it is a magical experience. And I think counselors need to provide magical experiences 
for their clients. As you can see, you come into the door and you see some comfortable places to sit. You might see a really good backdrop. For me, I'm so fortunate to have the view I do. It looks out onto the Bud Inlet on West Bay Drive in Olympia, Washington. It is so beautiful out here. And you can see the water and you can see Mount Rainier, the mountain on a clear day. Another thing you can expect from counseling is that any records that the counselor keeps, you always have the right to access. All you have to do is ask. And the counselor will keep either paper records or electronic health records or EHRs. Either way, you are entitled to view any and all of those notes that your counselor is taking about you and your treatment, including the treatment plan, any kind of reports that the counselor writes by hand or electronically. Probably should have mentioned this right off the top, but one of the things you can definitely expect from a counselor is confidentiality. Without your written consent, your counselor is not able to share any information in the counseling sessions that you have together. There are a couple of exceptions to this, one being that if you are going to self-harm, and that is self-harm by suicide, you intend and you have the means and a plan to commit suicide, then the counselor does have to notify the police or other authorities in order to keep you safe. Same goes as if you reveal an intention to kill somebody else, commit homicide, that also needs to be reported. And finally, if the counselor in the course of therapy finds out that you are a victim of uh, abuse and neglect and you are a child or a vulnerable adult, the proper authorities will be contacted for your safety. Another thing you can expect from a counselor is resources. A good counselor will be connected to their community and will know where to find help in case you need something the counselor can't provide. For example, a medical professional, some people want a psychiatrist or a nurse practitioner, some people just want a community group or an online group or a gathering of support networks that are public or maybe free educational events. So a counselor will be able to, if they don't know about it, at least be able to provide you with that information about education and resources that can help you. Even books or videos. I have a lot of TED Talks that I like to share with my clients and I like to share a lot of books. And videos are always good too for people who want information. And also I like sharing podcasts with people. I have a couple I like. I share my own podcast because it has information about mental health and about chaos and about overwhelm and anxiety and all things chaos. And they seem to appreciate some of the content that I have in that podcast. You should also expect some education from the counselor about emotions, because the reason you're in counseling is not just to solve a problem, but to learn about yourself and your feelings. Counselors are sort of like the ones who are in charge of your emotional health. We observe it, you observe it, we reflect back to you, and we teach you about the purpose of emotions, about how to manage certain emotions, and about how to get the best out of your emotional experience here in this human body that you have. Counselors will also offer you a perspective, a different perspective on situations that you're going through because counselors are an outside resource and they're not viewing things from the inside emotional world. Counselors can often be a really good place to go if you just need another point of view or to change your perspective into one that is more truthful and helpful. Here are some things that you should not expect from a counselor. One is advice. A counselor is there so that they listen and they reflect back, offer suggestions, advice and telling you exactly what to do is more related to coaching and for crisis management. You should expect somebody who helps you to reach your own decisions. A the therapist does not solve your problems, so please don't expect that during the course of the therapy session either. And a the therapist doesn't prescribe medications. That belongs to a nurse practitioner, a medical doctor, or a psychiatrist. And finally, you shouldn't expect a counselor to 
analyze you and your problems. Some counselors definitely do this, but that's not something that you should expect from the therapy process. I hope this has really been helpful and that you've enjoyed hearing about therapy. It really does help to talk to somebody else about your problems, about your struggles, and to hear somebody else's point of view, to have a listener there in a kind, safe environment and confidential. And I also hope you enjoyed seeing my offices. I know I love them and a lot of healing has been done in these rooms. As usual, I appreciate you listening to Calming the Chaos. Take good care and I'll see you on my next podcast. Thank you for listening to Calming the Chaos. If the information in today's podcast was helpful, please consider subscribing and share it with your friends. You can find this podcast on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, and on YouTube. You can also go to my website at www.lokahicounseling.com for more resources for calming your mental and emotional chaos. This includes a CD I created that teaches you how to practice mindfulness in less than 10 minutes. So check it out. Thanks again for listening. And I look forward to sharing my next podcast episode with you. In the meantime, take care.